Good morning, and welcome to Free Spirit Ministerial Worship Center. Bishop Timothy Byron McGee and Pastor Bernadine Bell McGee are honored to have you worship with them at 16012 Cottage Grove in South Holland, Illinois. Free Spirit Ministerial Worship Center is where we believe Jesus is Lord, building his kingdom is our purpose, and every guest or member is our priority. We are Free Spirit Ministerial Worship Center, where our motto is inspiring ordinary people to do extraordinary things. Wherever you are online, join, like, follow, and share Free Spirit Ministerial Worship Center. We can be found on Facebook and YouTube. Now, let's enter into our worship. Toward us 
Can we get to be right there? For your goodness a little faster and your mercy toward us. Can we just lift our hands right there for a little bit more? For your goodness. It's okay. I don't need it's good. And your mercy. I just want y'all to lift your hands and sing that to the Father. Say it. Say for your goodness. And your mercy toward us. Come on, lift your voice this morning for your, for your goodness, yeah. And your mercy toward us down through the years, God. Say for your, for your goodness. And your mercy toward us. We are. We offer praise. Yeah, yeah. Somebody clap your hands and give God praise this morning. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I hope y'all are praying with me this morning. It is always a complete honor. Um, you can sit for a second, but we're going to stand and read the word. Um, it's always an honor to, to bring the word of God in any type of fashion. And I believe and pray that I will always count it a privilege to do anything. Um, today, this morning, I want to I talk about another common story. Um, I don't plan to keep y'all so long, but I want to dig into this story a little bit. Um, I'm, I'm sorry. I need y'all to stand. We're about to read the word. <laughs> If y'all can go with me to um, Luke 8, 43 through 48. Again, this is a common story, and I'm going to be reading out the Amplified Bible this morning. When well, you got it, shout amen. Amen. Sounds like I'm waiting for a couple more people. Everybody got it? Here we go. And a woman who had suffered from a hemorrhage for 12 years and spent all of her money on physicians and could not be healed by anyone. She came up behind him, that's Jesus, and she touched the fringe of his outer robe and immediately her bleeding stopped. Jesus said, who touched me? While they were all denying it, Peter and those who were close to him, they said, master, the crowd, there's a crowd around you, father. I mean, like, what do you mean? They're, we're in a crowd of people. That's bound to happen. He's, they say, Master, the people are crowding and pushing against you. But Jesus says, no, no, no. Someone did touch me because I was aware that power to heal had gone out from me. When the woman saw that she could not be escaped or um, she could not escape being noticed, she came up trembling and fell down before him. She declared in the presence of all the people the reason why she had touched him and how she had been immediately healed. He said to her, daughter, your faith, your personal trust, your confidence in me has made you well. Go in peace, go untroubled, undisturbed. Uh, that is the word of the Lord, and the word of the Lord is blessed. Can we pray this morning? Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for this day. We're seeing another Thanksgiving, but there's a song that says every day, is a day of thanksgiving. God, we thank you today for being good to us. We thank you that when we woke up this morning, grace and mercy met us once again. We thank you, God, that you've kept us another year. You've kept us through heartache. You kept us through pain. You kept us through uncertainty. You kept us through messing up. You've kept us. And we say thank you this morning. We ask that your truth be spoken this morning, not just spoken, but received this morning. We ask that you give us another angle on gratitude this morning. You be glorified. In Jesus' name I do pray. Amen. Can you sit down with a praise? Hallelujah. I have, I take an interest in filming. Um, I've never gone to school for it. Um, I've never taken any classes. The most I've done is go to YouTube University. I don't know if I have any YouTube students in the house today, but I go to YouTube University. <laughs> um, what I do with, 
with looking at films or looking at shows is I observe a lot of things. I observe the angle that someone is shooting from. I observe, um, you know, what lens is being used. I observe um, the storyline, the writing. I observe a lot of things. And what I observe with a good writer of a TV show is this. A good writer roundabout knows at the beginning of a series what a main character life is gonna be like. They pretty much know who they're gonna end up with. They know what career they're gonna be in. They know the location that they're gonna be in. They know, pretty much know the ending of this, um, this character's life right at the beginning. But, but a good writer also knows not to start the character at the end. They, they, know that, um, they know that it's important for them to develop. What, what they will do is they will allow the character to build tension with the future. They'll allow them to get a glimpse of the future, but then right after they get that glimpse, they start them at the starting point. Because a good writer understands the need of development. A good writer understands that if I put them in the ending right when they're supposed to be at the beginning, they'll mishandle the things that they're supposed to be getting at the end. They'll mishandle the person that they're, supposed, they're gonna end up with. They'll mishandle the job that they're gonna end up with. They'll mishandle the finances and the location that they're gonna end up with. That's what a good writer does. Can I tell you something today? That we have a writer, um, who doesn't just roundabout knows the ending of our story at the beginning, but who absolutely knows the ending of our story right at the beginning. He has beautifully orchestrated and constructed a place called there for us. So, so what I'm trying to tell you today that yes, we go through ups and yes, we go through downs and yes, we go through trials. Um, but I came to tell you this morning while I'm tagging this text with this subject, um, that this is an end game. And, and I'll put it in churchy terms so you can repeat it after me. Somebody just shout out, it doesn't end like this. That's a praise report right there. Happy Thanksgiving. It doesn't end like this. If we look at this text, this woman, again, a no-named woman who has been hemorrhaging for 12 years, um, as explained in the text, she has gone to every doctor and she's exhausted all of her funds trying to get some type of healing. In fact, if you read this in Mark 5, 25, it says that she grew worse. That's something. Y'all, when I hear 12 years of no help, I don't hear what I expect when I go to the doctor. When I go to the doctor, I expect if you can't cure it, I expect you to at least help it subside. I expect you to at least um, help the pain go away for a couple of days. Give, give me a little ease from what's going on. But this woman had no help. She had no type of healing. And she spent all her money. Hmm. So it leaves me here. I can only imagine where else she's bleeding from. What do I mean by that? It, it's, it's one thing when you have situation after situation. I went through this, okay, I'm done with this. Now I'm going through this, okay, I'm done with this. Now I'm going through this. It's another thing when you've been dealing with the same thing for 12 years, it, when nothing has changed. I'm dealing with the same situation, the same circumstance for 12 years. It's another thing. It, it wears on you different. It bothers you in a different way. It plays on your mind, your psyche in a different way. It, it makes you start questioning some things. Because here is something. Here is an issue. Here is a trial that she's going through. And in its nature is designed to kill me. We're not supposed to bleed that long. We're supposed to be dead. In doctor's term, we would have bled out. 12 years of bleeding is designed to kill me, but it hasn't killed me but I'm suffering from it. I'm only feeling the effects of it, but it ain't killing me. If you have ever bled for a long period of time in women, I believe we understand this a little bit more. Um, and, and let me just pause right here and say that the strength of a woman is unmatched. I'm gonna get back into this, but the strength of a woman is unmatched. But if you have ever bled for a long time of given a certain amount of blood, it causes weakness. It makes you tired. 
You lose iron, you lose calcium. There's something that says that untreated heavy or prolonged bleeding can stop you from living your best life. It can cause anemia. It, it, it frustrates you. It irritates you when, you've been, when you're weak and you're tired and I still got to deal with life because it ain't taking me out. It's just causing me to suffer. So I had to go back and ask the question. I can only imagine where else she's bleeding from. After all, she is a human. She has feelings. Yes, yeah, she's a woman of faith, but, but, but it's make you start questioning in your thoughts. It makes you start bleeding in your beliefs and your thoughts. It spills over into your life and, and you get questions like, what is life? Why am I here? What is my purpose? What, was I a mistake? Did I mess up? Is God mad at me? Did I change God's mind about me? When you're going through something for so long, it makes you start wondering, okay, God, did, was I really supposed to be here? Do I really have a purpose? Listen, yes, by the end of this story, she is known as a woman of faith. But how was she processed until this faith-filled woman? What was her process like? What were her thoughts while she was being processed? I was telling someone that in order for me to gain muscle, um, my trainer got to throw some more weight on me. Um, I got I to gotta know it doesn't feel good, but, but he got to throw some more weight on me for me to get a little stronger. We don't just, can I tell you something? We don't just exercise this measure of faith that God has given us. Sometimes, some type of um, resistance and some type of trial and some type of opposition has to come to us for our faith to be in effect. For our faith to be activated, we have to have some type of opposition that comes to us. We got to get some weight up on us. It don't feel good. But it works for the good. So it says that she grew worse. So not only am I having to deal with this, this what seemed to be incurable problem that's not taking me out and only making me suffer. You're telling me I'm going to get worse? And this worse is, is not just all in the body. It's, it's beyond the body. It's beyond the obvious issues in her body. Her long-lasting issues actually caused more issues. It didn't even let the current issue resolve. We, we, we in addition right now. I know she like, God, the math ain't mathing right now. The math ain't mathing. Why are we still in math class? At what point are we going to go to subtraction? What point are you going to start taking some things away from me? But here it is. She's getting stuff added on to her. How do I know that there are more things outside of the body? Um, before I go there, I, want, I, want, I was lifting something very hard in the gym. And I asked my trainer, he, he came up behind me and he put some more weight. And I asked him, I said, why did you give me more weight? This is already hard for me. Like, I'm struggling already. And this is what he said. He said, because when I add more weight, then the weight that you're claiming is hard right now will get a little easier because I added some more weight. Pretty much the current weight that you're trying to um, conquer, I need you to hit it a little easier and a little longer. So he's fooling the muscle or he's actually telling the muscle that you're actually stronger than what you think you are. That you can handle what you don't think you can handle, but you don't know it until I put you under that pressure. Do, do you know that we are actually stronger than what we think and what we feel, but we don't know it until we're put in a place to have to, to have to use that type of strength. You are stronger than what you really think you are. So he added more weight and more issues to her. Here it is. When you go over to verse 43, it says that she spent all her money trying to get help from physicians. Dr. Tony Evans' commentary Bible, is, it puts it like this. Her physical problem led to financial, spiritual, and social problems. How? Studies suggest that due to this woman's constant bleeding, she would have been deemed unclean by the Jewish people because of the law. Not only that, but she, um, whoever she touched... Whoever she touched would be deemed unclean. She could not go and worship in the temple with everybody because she was unclean. So she's hemorrhaging. She's broke. She's lonely. She's isolated. And here is something that I got. 
Her issue of blood tried to attack who she was and put a label on her. Tried to label her as an unclean woman. Tried to attack her identity. Can I tell you something? The enemy wants nothing more than to attack your identity. He doesn't want your identity wrapped in Christ. If he can get you to think that you are unclean, that you are dirty, that you are incompetent, that you are inadequate, that you are insecure and inferior, if he can get you to think like that, then he knows he can get you to act like that. Did you know that we live by what we identify as? He doesn't want you to live as a son and a daughter of Christ Jesus. He wants you to live below your privilege. Live as if you are not a son and daughter of the Most High. Live as if you are not heir and joint heir with Christ. Live as if you aren't the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus. That's what he wants. But the reality is you are. So here, there it is. I missed that. <laughs> My first time ever getting it. <laughs> So here it is, her issue is attacking her identity. It has isolated her, it emptied her pockets, her earnings, and it doesn't allow her to gather to worship. But what if I told you that this is all a plan of the perfect writer of our story? What if this is in fact a part of the making of us? What if all of this is preparation for when we get to wherever we're supposed to be going? Might I suggest something to you this morning? It is my belief that who you are becoming is greater than where you are going. If you never become by the time you get there or by the time you get wherever you're going, then it may just be irrelevant for you to ever get there. This pastor, Chris Estrada, puts it like this. Who you are becoming is, is more important than um, what, you are, what you are waiting for. Sorry, who you are becoming while you are waiting is more important than what you are waiting for. Can I tell you this? It's, it's very important that we are careful that we do not allow people and things to always help us escape our hardship. Because sometimes when we allow that to happen, we are escaping our development. We are escaping our maturity. We are escaping our growth. We are escaping the making of us. We should not always allow anybody to help us escape the hardship. I, I have been through some things recently and my parents, they're not allowing me to escape. I can't just, they're not just babying me. No, they're not just pulling me out of the situation anymore. No, 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 Tiff, you got to be made in this. I'm going to tell you what you can do, but you got to be made in this. I can't, I can't let you just walk out of this and help you. I can't hold your hand this time. This time, you got to get it. You can't allow everybody to just pull you out of it. So what if the purpose of her going through all of this, because we don't just go through for ourselves. We go through for others. So what if the purpose of her going through this is because of what's to come? Not, not in that time, not just in that time, but generations and generations after her. What if you are going through, so yes, you can grow, but then you can sharpen others. You can help mend your family back together. You can, you can help your friends. You can help your children. You can help your spouse, your parents. What if it's not even all about you? Watch this. I hope you catch it, but I'll explain it. We don't hear about her life after this story. But we hear about her life after this story. I said this is somebody that kind of responded the same way. Tiff, what do you mean? We don't hear about her life in the real time of that moment after that moment, but we hear about her life generations and generations after that moment. We don't hear about her life after that moment, but here we are hearing about her life after that moment. It is important that we become, because when we become, we inspire others to be. So say this with me, I shall become. I will not allow anything or anyone to stop me from being made by God. I may cry, but I will be made. I may hurt, but I will be made. I may want to quit, 
but being made will override that feeling. I have an assignment. I have a purpose and I shall be developed so that I may accomplish what God has for me to do. Somebody shout out, I will be made. And ain't nothing or nobody stopping me. I have an assignment, I will be made for it. By the time I show up, I will be made. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because how do I feel in a fulfilled, how do I fulfill an assignment underdeveloped? How do I manage a problem underdeveloped? I got to be developed for it. I can't go into this situation underdeveloped. I got to allow him to make me so that I can accomplish everything that he wants me to do in that moment. I will be made. Now, here is what I wanted to know in the text. Exactly what helped her push through. See, we hear about her and that sharpens us. But what did she hear to sharpen her? Because that's, that's 12 years of suffering. Um, what, how are you still fighting 12 years? How are you still encouraged to push after 12 years of the same measure? How, how are you still in the mindset that, that I'm going to get a healing after 12 years? She's got to be tired. She's got to be weak. She's, she's lonely. She's hurt. She's broke. How are you still fighting? I told some people that when I'm tired, when I'm physically tired, it's hard for me. When, I, when I'm at a low, when I am physically tired, I, it's hard for me to fight off any type of mental thing, any emotional thing. It's, it's hard for me. There have been times when I have found myself, I would be in the airport and I would have to go into the bathroom and I'm crying. I, I found myself in my car and I'm crying because I was physically tired. So I'm, I'm mentally tired and I'm emotionally tired. How is she still fighting? But what I learned, and I got this from my parents, that you got to, after so long, after crying so long, I got to go and dig. I got to go and dig for what I know. I got to go and dig for I can do all things through Christ who can strengthen me. I had to go and dig for greater is he that's on the inside of me than he that is in the world. I had to go and dig for Romans 8 and 18 for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time aren't worthy to be compared to the glory which shall be revealed. I had to go and dig. We got to fight and we got to dig for it. It's hard because the enemy tries to trick us and get into our mind and our emotions. But at some point, you got to say, okay, enough is enough. I know too much of God's word to allow it to kill me. I would encourage you to go and dig. When you're, when you're crying, dig. When you're hurting, dig for it. You know enough about God. Go and dig for it. That he is your healer. That he is your way maker. That he is your keeper. That he can turn it around. Dig for it. But what does she dig for? She's a woman of faith in this story. And we know that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But what did she hear? But before we get to what did she hear, I had to go and really list, look, um, study what faith comes by hearing me. I, the word I had to go look up was the hearing part. Um, because it has to go, it has to go beyond just the sound waves that's going into this physical ear. It, it, for the, those who are deaf, it gotta go be, beyond just hand gestures. Here's what I learned that the hearing actually means accepting and receiving the message. So faith comes by accepting and receiving the message of God. It's not just what I hear, but what I grab onto is what I accept is what I receive. Faith comes by accepting and receiving the word of God. So what did she cling on to? I remember when Minister Rogers passed and I was really, it was, it was a hard time for us all. And I remember asking Maurice, I was crying. I said, Maurice, because he had already been through something. I said, Maurice, 
will I ever stop crying? And he told me this in so many words. He said, Tiff, in time, in time, it'll get, you'll be able to live better with this reality. I remember when Apostle Collins said something like, she only changed address. And, and when I heard those things, I didn't just hear it here, but I accepted and I received and I grabbed onto those words. No, it didn't change. It didn't change. I cried after that. But when I would cry after that, I would remember what I heard and I would say it's going to get better. Wait, wait. In other words, I would say it's not going to end like this. I, I would say that it's going to get better. It, it's going to get better. There's more to it. It doesn't end like this. It doesn't end with me crying. It doesn't end with sorrow. It doesn't end like this. I don't know what she heard. Maybe she heard about Jesus restoring the possessed, uh, the demon possessed man. Maybe she heard about Jesus. He was on his way to, to raise a dead girl. I don't know what she heard. But whatever she heard, she knew that when Jesus was in town, the healer was here. She knew that if Jesus was around, the healer was in town. And it wasn't just that the healer was in town. She made it personal and said, my healer is in town. My, my deliverer is in town. The one who can change my situation is in town. Whatever she heard, she clung to it and said, the healer is here. Somebody shout out, the healer is here. And because she received and she accepted that message, she said this, that surely if he can do it for them, then surely he can do it for me. Surely my life won't end depressed. Surely my life won't end in pain. Surely my life won't end with me crying. Surely my life won't end with me broken. Surely I won't end struggling. It won't end like this. Somebody shout, it won't end like this. Shout it, don't end like this. It don't end like this. It gets better, it gets better, it gets better, it gets better. It don't end like this. If he can do it for them, then surely he can do it for me. Somebody put your hand on your chest and say, surely he can do it for me. He can turn my situation. He can make me better. He can change my mind. He can clean my heart. change the report surely he can change my financial system surely hallelujah somebody put a praise right there and say surely he can do it for me hallelujah hallelujah can we take a praise break right there somebody shout hallelujah Surely he can do it for me. Surely he can do it for you, Jarrell. Surely he can do it for you, Lamar. Surely he can do it for you, Donna. Surely he can do it for you. If he can do it for them, the same God that did it then is the same God now. And surely he can do it for me. he can and not just I know he can but I know he will I, I, it's not just I know he but I don't listen I don't just believe in his ability anymore I believe he's willing to do it he's able and he's willing to do it somebody say he's able and he's willing to do it and he's gonna do it for me hallelujah hallelujah Bless your name, Jesus. Oh, surely. Surely. I'm not giving up. Surely. I may be a little down sometimes, but I got to lean on these words. Surely. Surely he's going to do it for me. I'm important to him. He's going to do it for me. My, my thing is important to him. He's going to do it for me. He's omnipotent.
omnipresent. So even while, while he's doing simultaneously doing it for somebody else, I ain't got to worry about waiting in line because while he's working it out for you, at the same time he's working it out for me, surely he's going to do it for me. Hallelujah. Take your season, put a praise on. doesn't end like this hallelujah I got one more thing and I'm done told y'all I didn't plan to keep you long this this message is titled it doesn't end like this and here is why and this is the part that really blesses me um, it didn't end like this because um, she went the Bible says that she touched the hem of his garment which means she totally went in faith because as we discovered, she was known as unclean and anybody she touched was unclean. So whatever she heard gave her some courage to go and get her healing. The Bible says that she went and touched the hem. So because she went in faith, she placed her thing, her issue on Jesus. Um, when I heard, when I looked at that, this is what I got. Um, that there is no time that you touch Jesus and there is no exchange made. That there is no time that you touch him and there is not an exchange made. She, she put her issue on him and she got back healing. Somebody say, at no point do I touch him and I don't get an exchange. First of all, to even go to him was a whole faith move. And that says that I believe and I have accepted and I have received whatever I heard about him. Hallelujah. So on this Thanksgiving, I want you to go in faith and I want you to put your thing on him today. Before you even, before you even eat your food, I want you to put your tears on him today. I want you to put your issues on him. I want you to put your hurt on him. I want you to put your anger on him. I want you to put your uncertainty on him. Put your illness on him. Put your addictions on him. Put your struggles on him. Put your worries on him. Put your fears on him. And watch him exchange and give you everything you need. you got because I got what you need give me what you got put it on me and watch me give you everything you need come to me all you who are weary and watch the exchange watch me give you rest Isaiah 61 watch this exchange um, hold on watch this exchange it says a crown of beauty and watch the exchanges for your ashes the oil of joy for your morning the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness can i tell you one more exchange that we all needed humanity laid their iniquities on them and in exchange he gave us divinity in exchange he gave us salvation in exchange he gave us freedom i need you to be encouraged this morning i don't know where you are in life i don't know what you're going through but here is what i do know that when you ask me how is this Thanksgiving and what am I grateful for even if I'm crying even if I'm hurting even if I'm low here is what I'm grateful for y'all know the title of the message that it does not end this way it does not end like this that's what I'm grateful for thank God that it does not end like Can I tell you something? That even if somehow I ended up leaving this earth, it still doesn't end like this. Because there's a place over in glory, a prepared place waiting on me. It still don't end like this. It does not end like this. And let me tell you this, by the time we get to the end, we win. Because it doesn't end 
end with me down. It doesn't end with me in sorrow. It ends with me a winner. It ends with me victorious. It ends with me being on top. Somebody say, it doesn't end like this. Hallelujah. So happy Thanksgiving. Give your neighbor a high five and say, it doesn't end like this. It, it doesn't end like this. Just, just hold on a little longer. There's more to the story. You just got to get there and be developed for when he gets you there. But it does not end like this. Hallelujah. I'm so glad it doesn't end with me in sorrow. I'm so glad that it does not end like this. Somebody put a big praise on that. Hallelujah. Shout out. Because I ain't winning. It don't end until I win. It don't end until I win. Hallelujah. It don't end like this. If I'm down, it ain't ending. It does not end like this. Somebody put a praise on this and give God a big. So, so when, I don't know if everybody does this, but, but when you go around the table today and you, you say, and they're asking you, what are you grateful for? You say, I want to call you, I want to call you poo here, but I'm going to call you LaDonna. It doesn't end like this. That, that's what I'm grateful for today. Even if I'm crying, I know there's more to my story. It doesn't end this way. I know you've been bleeding for a long time, but the healer is here. <laughs> The healer is here. The healer is in town. Somebody shout out, the healer is here. Hallelujah. Somebody shout out one more time. Let it. And this time I want you to receive and accept this because faith comes by receiving and accepting the message. Somebody shout out. Shut up. 